Um, okay, we're recording. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I want to welcome all of our attendees and our panelists to the Office of Neighborhood Coordination's very last Lunch and Learn of the year 2022. Um, first of all, I want to wish everybody a very happy holiday season. I want to thank everybody for being part of this panel. Uh, I will introduce our panelists very shortly. I'm going to give our um, attendees a couple of minutes to start kind of trickling in. I know it's the lunch hour, so they may take a few minutes. Um, we are recording this session as we record all of the ONC trainings. Once we are finished, I will upload it to the ONC YouTube channel and I will be sharing it in the weekly E news. Uh, because of the holiday and the fact that I will be taking some time off, the E news will not come back until the first week of January and I will include the training link there. But I will go ahead and get started with um, introducing our panelists, then I will lay down the ground rules and we will get going. I am going to start with Laura. Laura, do you wanna go ahead and introduce, introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Happy holidays, everyone. My name is Laura Keene, and I'm the Senior Crime Prevention Specialist with the Albuquerque Police Department. Thank you, Laura. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here. I know this is a busy time for you, both you and for the, the uh, Albuquerque Police Department. Did you want to also introduce uh, Lamont as well? Yeah, it's my pleasure to also introduce Lamont Davis, who's our new Crime Prevention Specialist for the Valley Area Command. Welcome, Lamont. Thanks for being part of the, the session. I really appreciate it. I have a really good working relationship with all of the area commands, and I look forward to working with you in the coming year. So uh, next person is Rudy. Uh, happy holidays, Vanessa. Thanks for having me. I'm Rudy Garcia. I'm a board member with Union Castle Neighborhood Association. I also oversee the safety patrol uh, for the Neighborhood Association. I'm currently consulting with Office of Emergency Management as well to set up community emergency hubs. Thanks, Vanessa. Okay. Thank you, Rudy. Those of uh, our attendees who have been on our previous trainings will probably recognize Rudy from several of the online trainings we did this past year. He did some very effective trainings on how to run effective neighborhood association meetings, how to deal with conflict, how to start your own neighborhood safety patrol, and we'll touch on some of that as this discussion goes forward. Um, Maria Wolf is going to try and log in. Maria is with the um, Downtown Project Safety ECHO program, uh, but she is traveling, so she may not be part of this. But uh, last but very much not least, uh, Val, very pleased to have you be part of our panel discussion. Do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? My name is Valerie Simpson. I'm the Director of Operations for a security company here in Albuquerque. It's a local one. Uh, it's called Mesa Detection Agency. I've been in security since 2006, and before that, I have a history of uh, or a background in corrections, both juvenile and adult, and uh, juvenile probation and parole. And I've been fighting for the past, not like in a cage or anything like that, but I've been fighting <laughs> for, uh, since 2010. So um, just a background in security really, that's what I got. That's great. Thanks, Val. I really appreciate you taking the time to be part of this panel discussion as well. Um, I know this is a busy time for you as well. Uh, I would imagine there's no non-busy time for for security companies, but I'm very grateful that for you to be part of this discussion. So for our attendees, first of all, thank you for taking the time to be part of this discussion. I just wanna let everybody know um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the same general uh, the same general overview that we generally do with these trainings. We will start the presentation. Uh, our panelists will do their, do their presentations. If you have questions, I ask that you please type them into the chat, or if you have comments or anything of that nature, please use the chat, that would be great. I will get to your questions toward the end of the presentation, and then I'll ask questions that have been emailed to me by people who couldn't be part of the training. I do wanna ask that we be respectful of one another, respect each other's opinions, uh, even if there's something that we maybe don't disagree or agree on, please be respectful of other people's opinions. Um, I ask that you we not interrupt or anything like that. So we will go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna start with Laura. As you know, this presentation is specific to neighborhood safety during the holidays. I know personal safety and residential safety is a big concern citywide. And I know that APD does an extensive amount of outreach in giving neighborhood associations and neighbor, just residents in general, suggestions and ideas for how to be safe during the holidays. Um, Laura, in your opinion, what are like some of the best ways that APD can recommend that residents and neighborhoods can be safe uh, during this holiday season? Um, you know, if you're going to be away from home, reach out to a trusted neighbor to help you keep an eye on your home. 
if you're going to be extended for a long or away for a long period of time, you might want to consider, you know, having a house sitter come in, whether it's a family friend or um, a neighbor that you trust um, that lives a little bit, you know, in another neighborhood to come in and stay at your home. Um, keeping lights on outside the home is always a good idea. And if you're going to be away for a brief period of time, having lights inside the home on timers so that your home has a, a, a lived in appearance while you're away. Mm -hmm. um, you also want to take a look at your home from the outside, especially if you like to leave your curtains open to have your um, holiday decorations on display. You don't want packages in plain view, presents in plain view, um, that, so that they can be seen from the street. And if Santa is really, really good to you this year, um, you want to break down your boxes and put them in your recycling container before you put it out on the street so you're not leaving the box that you got a you know 105 inch tv for christmas <laughs> sitting out on the curb for someone driving by to see that could you know and i'm sure i'm sure our colleagues at uh, solid waste will also thank you for doing that as well absolutely they will <laughs> there's a little plug for you guys over at solid waste you're welcome yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, when you're out and about, if you have any last minute shopping to do for the holidays, don't carry a large amount of cash with you. Don't wear any kind of um, flashy jewelry or anything like that. Um, keep, keep it to a minimum, carry you know a little bit of cash, carry a debit or a credit card that you can make your purchases on. Um, and of course, as always, situational awareness is important because the the retail sector is very, very busy. The malls are packed, um, you know, even, even areas um, with small businesses such as Old Town or Knob Hill, the streets can get crowded. So, you know, being aware of your surroundings is, is very, very important this time of year. Um, don't overburden yourself when you're carrying packages out to the vehicle. Um, and if you need assistance, you know, ask an employee or take a friend with you that can assist you um, with the shopping and also taking the packages out to your vehicle. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing some online shopping, what I always recommend is using a single credit card for all those purchases so they become <coughs> easier to track and account mm -hmm. for. And also take advantage of some of the retailers tracking software so you know when your packages are coming. Mm -hmm. And then finally, keep an eye out for uh, the seasonal workers that are working UPS, FedEx, working with Prime and the Postal Service this season. Um, they may not be as familiar with neighborhoods. So if you see someone following them, um, let not only the police know, but let the company know so they can get in touch with that driver and let them know um, because porch pirates are are out and about this time of year and they also follow um, the delivery companies as well to try to pick up what they're putting down. Something else that I wanted to bring to people's attention to be aware of is something that I hadn't really thought about but this happened to a neighbor of mine is she had put some things in her actual mailbox and put the little flag up to have it picked up and not five minutes after she had done that and uh, gone inside uh, some guy drove up in a car and you know, just bold as day took took them and thankfully you know I was working from home that day so I was able to get the guy's um, license plate and uh, let her know about it and she was able to fortunately cancel the checks immediately but um <clears throat> this isn't something else to be aware of is that people are going around looking in people's mailboxes and scoping out houses and probably fault like Laura said following the delivery trucks as well, but people are just out and about scoping out houses in general. Um, so that's always very good. Like you said, situational awareness is, is very beneficial. So those are really good suggestions, Laura. I did get a question. Um, I'll wait till the end, but it, it just remind me because there's a lot, a lot going on right now. My memory's a little bit shot, but uh, somebody had, had sent me in a question about turning off Bluetooth on uh, electric, electronic devices you might leave in your vehicle. So we'll come back to that toward the end. But thank you for that, Laura. That's very informative. Um, I wanted to segue over now to Rudy. Rudy, um, you have been very successful and been and proactive in doing neighborhood safety patrols in your neighborhood. And I wanted to ask if, if that changes during the holiday season, if, if what you're looking at changes, and maybe if you could give a few suggestions and tips to our attendees for perhaps starting their own. Sure. No, sure thing, Vanessa. Um, it doesn't actually change during the holiday season because it's yeah. essentially doing the same thing that we do year round. 
Uh, I started it in 2010 when the board asked, uh, at that time, crime stats were, were pretty high, a lot of burglaries, uh, porch pirates, um, a variety of different things. And um, then I was dean of students before I retired CNM. So I was working with APD often, as well as uh, state police and Burnley County and a variety of other law enforcement entities. And so when we started the safety patrol, and, and I do want to emphasize, because um, I know Val's with security, people ask if we're a security force. We are not a security force. By, by no means are we a certified security force. We are not a police force. Uh, I want to make that clear. What we are is eyes and ears um, with APD. Um, I'm glad Laura's on because we, our crime prevention specialists have been really phenomenal in working with us. Um, I take the lead and being that voice to APD. Um, really what we are is a group of neighbors that have been trained to observe uh, as we walk around the neighborhood or drive around the neighborhood and take care of each other. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially what it comes down to is forming uh, a unity uh, based on relationships. Um, we don't put ourselves at risk. We don't engage. Uh, what we do is if you're walking your dog, if you're jogging, if you're taking a walk, or if you're just driving through the neighborhood, you get the training on how to observe, what to look for, uh, what to uh, be cognizant of, uh, when to call 911, when to call 242 cops. Uh, all our safety patrol members wear a yellow vest uh, uh, with the lettering ACNA Safety Patrol. Uh, really, what we've become more than anything else is good uh, goodwill ambassadors in the neighborhood. That's what we've become. Uh, people will get to know people. Uh, I have a great relationship with um, our, our, our crime prevention specialist folks with Laura. Um, previous to, to Laura, I was the other Laura trio. Uh, we have used chiefs overtime at one point, but that has become a little bit more difficult um, to do. We don't patrol at night. We only patrol during the day, and that's for our safety. Uh, so we were using chiefs overtime mostly for nighttime patrols. Uh, but during the holiday season, essentially what we were uh, uh, doing as we patrolled was um, essentially looking for those suspicious individuals who were following UPS, FedEx trucks, um, folks who may be um, a common pattern is we'd see maybe two, two uh, individuals uh, maybe going down the street, sometimes riding down the center of the street. One's talking on the phone to the other as a spotter talking to each other, hey, there's maybe packages over here. Um, what's made it a little bit different now is that UPS and uh, Amazon Prime are using uh, um, temporary workers, so they're driving their own vehicles. And sometimes you're not sure uh, if, if they're not wearing a vest or some type of ID, sometimes you're not sure if they are who they are. Uh, but really what that comes down to is just being a good watchful neighbor. It's like the neighborhood watch program that Laura oversees is paying attention to situational awareness in your neighborhood. What's going on in the neighborhood, watching out for each other, paying attention. Um, during the holiday season, we, if we're out, we'll ask our neighbors, hey, can you pick up a package? Because we set up alerts uh, where UPS uh, and uh, Amazon will let you know your package is around the corner. It's gonna, I recommend that for folks. Um, sometimes I think what it comes down to what we see is sometimes folks just aren't paying attention and they really are ordering all these packages and they're stacking up on their front porch without really paying attention to, hey, is somebody gonna be able to pick these up for us when we're not there? Um, that sometimes happens. We see a lot of unlocked vehicles during the holidays because visitors are coming and so they'll park and visit with family and they'll leave a backpack or purses or laptops in their vehicles and they're not locked in their easy view. Uh, what I will say is, uh, I'll give you a, an example is when I was at CNM and I had situations with students, uh, sometimes if I caught a student for, uh, uh, who was stealing items, I would ask them, I would enter, hey, what caused you to rip that vehicle off? And most of the time I look for the easiest, um, less resistance, um, very fluid. If I see a car and the doors are open and there's a person, a backpack there, guess what? It will take me less than five seconds to open that door, grab yeah. that, keep on walking. And, mm -hmm. and I think during the holidays, we get busy, we get, we lose our focus, we lose situational awareness. And so we're just rapidly running from place to place, not paying attention. Uh, when I worked EMS, we helped security at the mall one time. And uh, my partner and I used to pick who could potentially be a victim because they'd be walking out, not paying attention while carrying their purses and their bags to their car. And they would drop everything as they're opening the trunk of their car. And I was thinking, boy, they would be an easy target to just easily drive up, take the package, take the purse. Yep. Um, so I'll reemphasize what Laura said is what we teach our folks here. Be observant, pay attention to what's happening around you. 
um, and and help each other out. Um, so that's that's really we haven't done anything different with the safety patrol. Uh, they're not hard to start. What it comes down to is just a lot of uh, willingness um, and a personality. Uh, you got to have somebody to start it and somebody to stay with it, and somebody who's willing to be that dialogue between the neighborhood and APD. Sure. Sure. Something else uh, that I just occurred to me when you were talking about being aware of your surroundings, Rudy, is this actually happened to a, a, the mom of a friend of mine. Uh, she was uh, grocery shopping last week, getting uh, everything ready for Christmas Day, and she was pushing her cart out to the car in the in the parking lot of the um, the grocery store, and she had put her purse in that little that little front car where you put the kid right, right. where you take your kid grocery shopping with you, and she left it there while she was putting bags into her trunk and this guy walked by and just like she didn't even notice because he it was so quick and then she realized and by then he was gone and so that's just sure. something that um I wanted to and it's not something I thought about because I don't take a purse with me shopping but if those people yeah. who do carry a purse with you when you go grocery shopping do not leave it in the cart um carry it under your arm put it in the car and lock the car and then before you start putting your groceries into your trunk I just something else that you know occurred to me. I wanted to bring that to people's sure. attention because I know and, a lot of people are going to be at the grocery store in the next few days. Sure. So please be cognizant of that. Sure, Laura uh, or Vanessa, I do want to emphasize, um, and and I'm glad you said the purse thing. My wife carries a backpack purse, yeah. so it makes it harder to to kind of take away from that. But one thing I'll say about the safety patrol is, um, in some of the interviews I also had with some of the other um, folks I dealt with, and I asked them. When you go into a neighborhood and you have an intent to steal or do some harm, what do you look for? And he said, if I'm being watched, I will not I will not do yep. what I want to do. Yep. And so there's nothing worse than having a group of people in yellow vest walking around your neighborhood, just walking and being observed. Um, mm -hmm. And that by far is one of the biggest deterrents that we've seen. Our stats, when you look at our stats, I look at the crime stats for the uh, seven surrounding neighborhoods to ours. And we're only a less than 1% of those stats. And most of our calls uh, on a monthly basis, most of them are uh, calls uh, suspicious person, suspicious vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Laura could tell you that as well. We yeah. just, we don't have a lot of high stats and I attribute that to the relationship with APD and our safety patrol. That's great. Thank you for that, Rudy. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, Val, I was hoping you could talk a little bit about just the benefits that for some neighborhoods, because um, not all not all neighborhoods utilize private security. But I wanted you to see if you could talk about the, the just in general about what the difference is between a private security firm and maybe what um, what APD could do, or a neighbor obviously a neighborhood association, uh, a neighborhood safety patrol is going to be different. But I was hoping you could talk a little bit about what the benefits of private security are um and then if that if how private security changes how it patrols during the holiday season in neighborhoods um so rudy had some great ideas and that is um, um so the best way to really present can you can you hear me okay yes. okay uh -huh. the best way to present security to somebody who's like an introduction to security is to go through the five D's. So I'm gonna quickly go through the five D's real quick. So um, when you're thinking about security, when you're thinking about securing your home, like when you're thinking about secure, securing your neighborhood, um, something that's valuable to you, right? Uh, you want to think about the five D's. So in the five D's you have, you have deter, detect, deny, delay, and defend. And, um, so the first D is deter. The deterring is, you know, using fencing, using lighting, using what Rudy was talking about, and that's like the ambassador or a security guard. Um, the, can you tell me what they are. I'll type them into the chat now. What are the five Ds, really quickly, and then you can go into the presentation part, and I'll just that way everybody has them can maybe write them down if they want the five Ds again. Deter, deter, detect. Detect, deny, deny, delay, delay, and and defend. Defend. Got it. So if you, if our participants, our attendees, want to maybe make a note of that. So deterring is like what Rudy is saying. It's going around, um, having eyes on the street, and just somebody who cares about about the the neighborhood. Um, 
make sure that the neighborhood's clean. You know, the cleaner it is, I, maybe the less likely it is to be for people to go into it. I know that the neighborhood that I live in, I live in, a, right? I live in the, I live in Kenny Brick and it's in the South Valley and our neighborhood is immaculate. We all keep it clean and we all watch out for each other. We don't have anything. We don't have anything official, but we have everybody's number. And I know the names of my neighbors too. Um, so a security guard driving around offers that uh, deterrence, but so does what Rudy said. Um, you know, just people caring about marked um, uniforms, caring about the neighborhood, walking around saying, hey, I'm here to keep an eye out for things. Detect, it's another way to detect is, is to use, you know, a person. Um, a lot of people think of use cameras to, to detect. Some of the main objective of, of detection is to, um, is to monitor say, uh, spaces safely. So like ring cameras, I, I'm assuming, I don't have ring cameras in my neighborhood because I have a lot of nosy neighbors, but <laughs> Um, ring cameras thing. are, I think, I don't know how to work them because I don't have one, like I said, but what I see is people can access them remotely. I know my, my boss has one and he's, he accesses his, his remotely. Um, so some sort of surveillance I think is accessible to the general public nowadays, something to consider. And that would probably help with, uh, detecting at night right, to, to detect somebody around the neighborhood at night when you really can't go out into the streets. Um, denying is denying unauthorized people while allowing authorized people. And of course, we don't want to be, you know, we don't want to put uh, labels on anybody or be really, be really judgy of people. Um, you know, it's, it's a free world. It's a free country. We can walk walk on the street if we want to, we can walk on the, on the sidewalks. Um, what I usually tell people, what I tell my guards is um, when you're trying to determine whether somebody belongs there or not, just greet them like a normal person. Hey, how's it going? You doing okay today? Uh, can I help you find something? You seem a little bit lost. Just be as positive as possible. Even if they uh, start getting aggressive, if they start getting aggressive, just disengage and walk away, right? But just be as positive as possible and try to get more information to figure out if that person is actually unauthorized. And then you have delay and a delay, the purpose of delay is to slow down an active, an active intrusion or to delay, you know, a forceful forceful uh, intrusion or burglary. And that is what Rudy was saying again by locking your doors and um, locking your house up, <laughs> locking the doors to your, locking your front door. Pretty bad about knocking, not locking my doors in my neighborhood, but um, I started to lock my doors now that we have Christmas presents. Um, <laughs> and then Defend, and that is the final D of securities of security. And um, when you have to defend, that is when you would want to call when you would want to call somebody to help you. Uh, defend is taking you know taking forceful action in a way. Uh, that would be having police officers present. Typically, people, uh, un undesirable people, will listen to a security guard, and they'll but they'll see a uniform, and sometimes they can tell if it's a cop or not. Sometimes, you know, it's sometimes it's a gray area, but they know typically <laughs> if you have an encounter with somebody with a uniform, and you say no, I'm not going to leave. Just more uniforms are going to show up until that person just leaves, and. They know that, right? So um, hiring private security, you know, if you can, if it's expensive, security mm -hmm. is very expensive. Um, if you can find a way to like do what Rudy does, 
that's very impressive. And uh, yeah, that was part of why I wanted to have this panel discussion because I wanted to offer a variety of me methods for our different neighborhoods based on their different needs and their different, you know, just their different capacities. Some neighborhoods have different, you know, different levels of resources that are available, but I think everybody has the capacity to walk down the street, you know, and maybe with a friend and, you know, say hi to people that maybe they don't recognize. I do that in my own neighborhood and um, it's, a, it's a really effective way of, of kind of seeing who you know who who's there who should be there and who shouldn't be and um so i think those are really important things to remember um one of the one of the things that had come up um i forget who mentioned it but i had gotten an email question about it is you know between kind of between neighborhood watches and neighborhood safety patrols and private security is the question of chief's overtime um laura can you speak a little bit about that you're muted I think I could learn how to get myself off of mute after all this time. After the um, past two years of being on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a Chiefs Overtime program. Um, that's where uh, businesses or neighborhoods can look into hiring off-duty officers um, in a security capacity. We do have limited space uh, for clients. It is a voluntary program for officers to pick up additional overtime. Um, so I would encourage um, anyone who may be interested to contact our Chiefs Overtime Office and inquire if they are accepting new clients at this time um, and they can, can get them uh, more information on that as far as the rates and, and things like that. Okay, great. Thank you for that, Laura. I appreciate it. Um, Val, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just, it was something that just occurred to me when you were doing your presentation, so I apologize. No, that's okay. That's okay. Um, um, are, 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 secu are private security firms, are, are they armed, Val? So there's three different levels of security. And so there's level one. So level one is unarmed. There is level two where they, level two has less than lethal. So you have restraints, so you have handcuffs, you have a baton, collapsible asp, and you have pepper spray. Okay. If you want to, if you want to have a taser, you have to have a, an additional certification to carry around a taser. And it's not like a police taser, it's a little bit uh, less, I don't know, I don't know about tasers all that much, but it's not like a, like a police taser, it's a little bit different. And then there is level three, and level three is where you're you're armed, you're carrying a firearm with you, and um, that is like the top level that you. That's like the highest level you can get. Okay. So level three is really expensive, really, really, really expensive, and I personally feel uh, maybe there's there's some contracts that require level three, but more like federal contracts, but if you're looking at if you're looking at something for like neighborhoods, I would not be sold on a level three just because um, all you really need is like is just the uniform presence, right? You don't really need just because you have a gun, it doesn't make the situation safer, and it could maybe in some instances uh, amplify. A situation that could have been de-escalated, or uh, having a firearm, a level three guard could amplify at a situation where a police officer could have taken care of it, and you're going to end up having to call the police anyway. Mm -hmm. so, um, so it sounds like you're saying that the just in general having a uniformed off or uniform security officer can be one of the better deterrents, even more so than having that higher level of uh, of being armed. It is for sure. And the only thing really that that uh, office or security guard can do because we're citizens, right? We are citizens. We're not police officers. We don't take an oath. We are we are private citizens. We get our training. We're, we're licensed through the state, but we get our training by programs that our, our uh, businesses have put together that are that are approved through the state. Okay. <laughs> so one of the things that we cannot do is hold somebody and take them to jail. So if we hold somebody 
we can hold them up to two hours, I believe. Don't quote me on this, but it's up to about two hours. And they are in our custody. We have to make sure that they're safe. We have to make sure that they're, you know, they're not in danger, that they're comfortable, all this other stuff. And if the police don't show up, then we have to just let them go. Okay. So, um, is that why um, is that why a lot of uh, stores, this is what I had heard from a, a local business owner that oftentimes it's why a lot of times when uh, security officers in um, retail stores catch people shoplifting, they can't really do anything. Unfortunately, they can they can detain them for a certain amount of time, but they can't make a they can't make an arrest. No, we can only yeah, correct. We can only detain. We cannot make an arrest. I see. Because we're not we are not officers. We are mm -hmm. not officers. So. Okay. Yeah, we're observe, you know, uh, our company mostly does observe and report mm -hmm. and that seems to work for us. So okay. great. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that, Val. Rudy, I wanted to go back to something that you had touched upon when you were talking about a neighborhood safety patrol and you had talked about being trained to be a good observer. Can you give mm -hmm. a few examples of that? Like what is something, what would it was something that like if I wanted to start my own neighborhood safety, sure. watch, what would you recommend? In terms of um, you, being know, a good observer. you know, one of the biggest things we have to teach people is, is observation. People, when I start training them on being a safety patrol person and I'm walking them through the neighborhood, I'll say, look at that house, see how it has a gate wide open and access to the back of the house and see how they have that window open. And they'll go, oh my gosh, I wouldn't have noticed that. I'll say, look, her front door is open or his front door is open or the garage is wide open and they have uh, lots of uh, big time tools there. Um, so when it comes to observation, I think a lot of us go through life, uh, just going through life without really taking time to observe. What, and it's funny because sometimes when I'm training, somebody will say, you know, I've walked by that house and I've never seen how pretty their tree is until you stopped and you were talking about how that tree maybe blocks the window mm -hmm. uh, uh, branch. The other thing with observation that, and Val alluded to it, is we teach people to observe behavior not to profile, yep. not to, because everybody has a stereotype or a bias. Um, you know, the media presents things in certain ways. We we try to train people say, look at the behavior. Is the behavior suspicious? Because when you call 242 cops or 911, we want you to be able to report it, uh, report the behavior. You just don't call in and say, there's a big guy here and he's 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 doing he's doing something wrong. We want you to be able to say, what is the behavior uh, mm -hmm. that's that's causing the suspicious or for you to be suspicious? Is that person uh, looking in through a window uh, in a house and has a rock in his hand? Is that person trying to open car doors? So that's one of the biggest things is um, observation. The other thing is how to report it. A lot of people don't know how to report. And so uh, my good friend, John Corvino, he was with APD for 27 years when we hired him to be chief of security at CNM. I've brought him in to train our um, our folks on how to report something, how mm -hmm. to be a witness to something. Uh, because when you ask somebody, hey, how would you report that suspicious vehicle? Oh, it's a car with two doors. Well, it's more than a car with two doors. Um, how would you report it to when you call it into APD? How would you describe me? Uh, for example, when I'll tell you what I get a lot walking through the neighborhood. Hey, Rudy, I saw this. Okay, did you call it into 242 cops? No, I want I want to let you know. Ah, uh, okay. You need to call it in 242. But sometimes I'll I'll use I'll say how tall was the person in comparison to me? I'm five foot ten and a half inches. They were taller. How tall? So sometimes I'll use that as a descriptor, but. Um, I think for a lot of folks, they really have to be taught how to observe something sure. and how to pay attention to something and how to report it out. That's really probably the biggest thing that we do more than anything else. Um, yeah. and, and like I said, it's just a deterrent to be in a vest. Uh, that's our uniform to be paying attention to what's going on. Uh, we don't follow people per se. The other thing that Val mentioned that we do, and I do it very often, if I see a suspicious behavior, I'll just be walking around. Hey, uh, Vanessa, how are you? How are you doing? Yeah. Um, you know, do you need any help? Uh, you know, we're with the neighborhood patrol. If you need help, let us know. Have a good morning. Um, kind of a light engage. Uh, I wouldn't even call it an engagement, but just an introduction to, hey, how you doing? You're letting um, them know then, that you're there yeah, and that you're yeah. you're you're aware. Yeah. Right. Right. That, so, um, something similar happened uh, a couple of weeks ago here in my neighborhood. Um, the house next door to me had uh, gotten sold and the new owners hadn't moved in yet. They were doing some renovations to it. And a house around the corner that had been 
being renovated had been broken into over the weekend and the workers tools were stolen and I noticed it because I walked my dog. So I had um, met the new neighbors and I had let them know that there had been this guy riding up and down my street on a bike. Well, I live in a cul-de-sac and there's only two houses that have kids, that, and, but they're both skateboarders. They're not, they're not bike people. So this guy was very, you know, it was very obvious. He was kind of cruising up and down the street. And I noticed he started circling in front of the house next door where people hadn't moved in yet. And, you know, of course me, we're talking about a nosy neighbor. That's me. Um, let, you know, let the neighbors, all of my neighbors know, cause I have a little, I have everybody's number. I can text them. So I texted everybody on my street and um, come to find out that the next day, the house on the cul-de-sac opposite us got broken into by a guy on a bike. So I think, and, but nobody on our street got hit. So I, you know, I, I think that's very, what you were talking about, Rudy, in terms of being observant about a behavior is very, very, it's very significant because like I said, you know, I know who is who in my neighborhood and, and we don't have that many people riding mm -hmm. up and down. And we certain I mean, who needs to ride up and down the street where there's a cul-de-sac six times? I mean, you're mm -hmm. not going to end up anywhere except at the at the Arroyo at the end of the street. So, yeah. So I just want something else that I wanted to, to kind of just bring up as a specific example is, is you know, when people are doing that, you know, riding a bike five or six times in front of, you know, a house here or a house there, that to me is suspicious well, behavior as well. Behavior, ex exactly. And and we call it the Mrs. Kravitz syndrome from Bewitched. <laughs> she used to raise the blind and see what uh, uh -huh. was happening across the street. So, yeah. But uh, yeah. I think I'm the biggest thing, Vanessa, in my neighborhood and I don't care. <laughs> I think the biggest <laughs> thing, Vanessa and Laura can speak to this. And this happens in all neighborhoods. People will see suspicious behavior, but they don't call it in. Yeah. And then there's a there's a break in and they and that ha that happens. And, and I don't know why people are hesitant to make that call, because we try to tell our neighbors, look, if you see something and it's suspicious uh, in nature, call it in, call it into 242 cops. If a crime is being committed, call 911. And a lot of times I'll get, well, I didn't want to call it in. It's they're not going to do anything. And I'll, I'll say they may not respond right away, but it's part of the statistics that um, if, if we have a lot of call-ins, then a, APD will look at that and maybe patrol our neighborhood a little bit uh, on a greater uh, a potential. But I think I see that in a lot of folks I talk to from different neighborhoods. They're hesitant to make a call when they see something that they feel suspicious. And you can also report that kind of activity over the APD app. And so it makes it very, very simple. Yeah. Um, so if you're an app user, you can search either Google Play or the App Store for ABQ Police and um, download the app, but it's real simple to use. Um, they will get back to you with the CAD number, the computer aided dispatch number, and then there's a chat function in there if they have any extra or additional questions for you. Yeah, and I can vouch for having used the app for several things. So I encourage our neighborhood folks to download it. Um, I will actually put the link in, a, in the chat if you want to download it from the APD website. Um, Laura, I was hoping you could talk a little bit more about the, uh, I know uh, one of our attendees, um, Pat Mallory, hi Pat, had sent a question in about the uh, APD scan program about uh, security cameras. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Absolutely. So SCAN stands for Security Camera Analytical Network. And it's a way for individuals to register if they have, um, some of the home cameras that Val spoke of. We don't monitor home cameras or tap into home cameras, but what it does is it allows our real-time crime center to have those locations on file. So if something does occur in a neighborhood, officers can start with the homes that have uh, security cameras installed rather than having to go door to door asking people if they have a security camera. For anyone on the call that may be a business owner, we have a program for businesses as well where they can sign a, an MOU or a memorandum of understanding with the city and allow our real-time crime center to access their cameras in case of a 911 call. And the businesses are able to choose which cameras the APD has access to and um, you know, restrict others. So um, you know, for a, a a business like a Walgreens, they can say you cannot have access to cameras around our pharmacy for patient privacy reasons, but over the registers over our front door, you can access those cameras. Um, so you can get more information on both of those programs if you go to uh, the city website, cbq.gov, and just search for SCAN, and that will come up. 
Great. Thank you for that, Laura. Good information to have. Um, I, I had gotten another question in as well about um, safety specific uh, to the holiday season uh, when people are shopping and putting things in their vehicles. Um, there had been an article in one of the um, area command newsletters a while back about turning off Bluetooth on mobile devices because apparently some thieves now can detect um, Bluetooth signals on mobile devices that are stored in a car, like if you are going somewhere and you don't want to take your laptop in or you don't want to take your iPad in. Is that something you can give us a little bit more background on, Laura? Yeah, and it, it's just a scanner that they can pick up off at, at a lot of retailers and it just lets them know where a Bluetooth signal is available. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you are going to secure um, a phone or a tablet or something like that in your vehicle, um, definitely turn that Bluetooth functionality off. Okay. Um, you know, it, it just is uh, an additional way that um, that these can look for devices. Mm -hmm. And a lot of newer cars connect to Bluetooth on your phone um, automatically and Wi-Fi on your phone if you're if you have a car that's Wi-Fi enabled. So turning those off um, when you don't need to be using them um, is important. So that okay. those scanners can't pick up the signal. So, and I think an, a good addendum to that would be if you are going, if you're doing any Chris, kind of Christmas shopping or just shopping in general and you're buying those types of items, don't store them in your car when you go shop, shopping someplace else. Take them home and then go finish the rest of your shopping. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and you don't want to make... Um, so if you're if you're shopping at the mall and you know you have several packages you want to put in your car and you put them in the trunk, don't then go back into the store. Yep. What I recommend is get in your car if you have more shopping to do, drive to another parking spot mm -hmm. and park because there are um, people who will hang out in the parking lot just watching for those opportunities that that Rudy spoke of or watching for someone to put packages in their car and then go back into the store and they can uh, break into the car and take those packages. So, and I know, know it's a hassle, but it's, it's, it's better than having coming back and having your car broken into and all of your gifts stolen. So, right, right. Absolutely. Which I think we've all known somebody that's had that happen before. Yeah. Do I wanted to open up the floor to our attendees. If they have any questions, this is the time to ask them of our panelists in the chat. Um, going once. <laughs> I think that's it. Um, I think we covered everything. I, unfortunately, we did not have Maria Wolf joining us. Uh, I believe I mentioned she's traveling. But um, I did want to thank our panelists. I'm going to wrap this up if, since we don't have any questions. Um, but I did want to give our panelists the opportunity if, they, if there's anything that I missed or if there's anything important that they feel should be included in this discussion, feel free to go ahead and, and bring it up now. Valley, oh, yeah. Val, Val, please. Um, so probably about a couple of years ago, I was driving around, I was just taking a cruise around the neighborhood downtown, and there was a lady putting her her infant child into a car seat mm -hmm. in the back. And what she did, she just she walked out, she had headphones on. Don't walk around with headphones, guys. She walked out, she had headphones on, and she went straight to her car didn't look around at all she went straight to the back of her car and started putting in her kid and this guy started coming up and he stopped and he was looking at her and he started walking towards her i was in my car i slowed down i was like hey man how's it going what what, what you up to do you need something he got spooked he said a couple of cuss words and he walked away that lady had no idea Mm -hmm. none I didn't stop and tell her or anything like that I just went I just kept going but yeah. she had no idea I approached this guy she had no idea there was some guy behind her she was just like in her own little in her own little world yeah. so same thing probably I'm assuming with like the when you're getting down your Christmas gifts you know when you have your trunk popped open and you're running in and out uh again I'm fortunate to live in a neighborhood that's off the beaten path and I don't really have to worry about that but like a downtown neighborhood uh, maybe you can have, maybe you can double up, have, you know, have two people take in, help, help you take in your stuff. Mm -hmm. So just be careful when you're um, going yeah. out to your car too. Yeah. I, I think there's all these things that we, I think we just don't think about on a day-to-day -day basis, but I think it's important to, to train ourselves to think that way 
because there are some, there's always somebody watching, you know, no matter where we go and what we do, always somebody looking for that, op, that, uh, that little opportunity where they can just go and, you know, grab your purse or grab stuff from your car or, or do something else worse. So yeah, thank you for that, Val. I appreciate that reminder. That's very good. I, I just yeah. want to add, I, I'm a huge community engagement kind of guy, community building guy. I, I mean, the only thing I would want folks to know that you can really be good at, and it doesn't take any money, is just watching out for each other. Yeah. Um, I, I do a lot of neighborhood type activity, and I, I'm amazed at the number of neighbors that don't know their neighbors, and they've lived in their house for 20 years, and they haven't reached That's out crazy. to the neighbors surrounding them. And um, Or I'll hear, wow, I, I didn't want to reach out to her because she's a little mean. I'm like, well, why is she mean? Because she didn't wave at me. <laughs> why don't you just go over and just introduce yourself? Um, and I get it. There are some neighborhoods that's tough to do, but I'm a huge believer that you really have to engage with each other and get to know each other. Uh, kind of like you with your uh, your little cul-de-sac, us here. Um, I, I'd say at this point, I know about 90% of the neighborhood just by doing safety patrols and I've gotten to know uh, people. And it's nice because when you get to know people, you get to know each other, there's a relationship built there on, based on trust. Mm -hmm. and, and I find that I wish more neighborhoods would do that in Albuquerque. It's just people get yeah. to know each other. I do too, and it, it's and, and I think maybe maybe and I also think a lot of it depends on on just how comfortable we are engaging right. with other people. Right. As well, I know you know people have different personalities, and and that's understandable. But the way I got to know all of my neighbors when I moved into this neighborhood a couple of years ago is there had been a a little a little bunny in my front yard, a little cat and tail bunny, and I he looked domestic. I thought, oh my gosh, he escaped from someone's house. So I, I carried that bunny and I literally went to every single house in my cul-de-sac and knocked on the door and said, are you seeing a bunny? And I got to know every single one of my neighbors. We exchanged numbers. And so, yeah. And, I, and to me, I mean, that was, I mean, hopefully nobody finds a lost bunny in their yard. And <laughs> But that's just, I mean, that's just one example of, of getting to know your neighbors and, and I think contributing to the safety of, of where you live. So just mm -hmm. something small like that. So thank you I'm for that reminder, Rudy. To, oh, I'm sorry, Laura, go ahead. Just to add on to um, you talking about the mailboxes with the flags up, mm -hmm. even if you're taking, um, even if you're going by the post office, please take your uh, mail inside to mail it because oh, we do have okay. fishing out of the blue boxes. So if you have something important, documents, you're mailing a check, something like that, take an extra couple of minutes to walk inside the post office and drop it in the inside boxes rather than dropping it out the blue boxes. Good to know. Thank you for that, Laura. I, I didn't realize people were, how could, how could, uh, anyway, never mind. <laughs> how could people do it? But okay, they can. So yeah. All right. Well, good. Good to know. Well, thank you all very much for taking the time to share this really valuable information. I'm sure our attendees appreciate it. I know I do. I learned quite a bit today. Um, attendees thank you all for taking the time to be part of our our very last lunch and learn of the year i really appreciate all the work you do on behalf of your neighborhoods thank you you make my job much easier by the work that you do so thank you rudy laura val i cannot tell you how much i appreciate you all taking the time to to be here this is a really useful training very timely and um thank you just thank you from the bottom of my heart i, hope, I wish you all very happy holidays merry christmas happy hanukkah happy kwanzaa whatever you celebrate happy festivus Happy solstice. <laughs> happy holidays, everyone. Happy Thank holidays, you. everybody. Take care. Happy Thank holidays, you. everybody. Be safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.